Hey, hello, my name is Jojo and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome. Today, I'm gonna be talking through the pros and cons of getting a master's degree before applying to PhD programs. This is something that I really had to consider for myself before going through my first round of PhD applications. Ultimately, I ended up applying to both master's programs and PhD programs, and obviously, I ended up in a master's program. But yeah, when it comes to getting a master's degree before applying to PhD programs, the short answer is really, it depends and that's really not a helpful answer but there are a lot of things to consider and so I tried to make a detailed pros and cons list to go through for you all um, and I included a couple of alternatives that might be a little more beneficial depending on your circumstance or situation so let's get right to it okay so the first reason you might want to consider getting a master's degree before applying to PhD programs is if you are switching fields. If you did not major in psychology in undergrad, um, let's say you majored in business or finance or some other field and you've been working in that field already or you just graduated from undergrad and decided that that wasn't the field for you and now you're thinking about pursuing psychology. A master's degree in psychology is really the perfect way to transition because it will introduce you to really the foundational coursework for a psychology degree that will also prepare you for a PhD program. The second reason you might want to consider getting a master's degree before a PhD is if your undergrad GPA wasn't exactly where it needed to be. Many if not all PhD programs have minimum GPA cutoffs and for most programs if your GPA does not meet that cutoff they won't even look at the rest of your application. Needless to say this is not the case for all programs. I know that some programs make special considerations if you have you know unique circumstances but from my knowledge and from talking to faculty members who have been a part of the application review process for most programs, if your GPA does not meet their minimum cutoff, they will not look at the rest of your application. So doing a master's in psychology will really give you the opportunity to show programs that you are capable of doing graduate level psychology coursework and maintain a good GPA, which will strengthen your application for when you do apply to those programs. Another reason you might wanna consider getting a master's degree is if during your time in undergrad, let's say you mastered in psychology, you have a good GPA, but you weren't a part of a research lab or you don't have much research experience. Most PhD programs like you to come in with some form of experience, whether it's research experience, clinical experience, or both. And so if during your time in undergrad, you were not able to get as much experience as you would have liked or the program that you are applying to would have liked, then getting a master's degree will hopefully give you that chance to gain more research experience or clinical experience. In most master's programs, you will join a faculty member's research lab. And so the end result is that you will hopefully come out of a master's program with at least a year, if not a full two years worth of research experience. Am I on four? I think I'm on four. Yeah. So the fourth, so the fourth reason that you might want to consider getting a master's degree first is if you just aren't sure that you even want a PhD in clinical psychology. PhD programs are a lot of work and they take a lot of dedication and time and some people are just not ready to make that kind of commitment both time-wise and monetarily because they really just aren't sure that this is what they want to do yet and that's fine. I think getting a master's degree before deciding whether or not you want to pursue a PhD in that field is probably the best thing to do if this is something that you aren't sure of because if you finish your two years and you decide a PhD isn't for me then it's just two years and you can move forward from there however you see best for you. On top of that underneath the giant umbrella of psychology are a bunch of different 
subfield. So getting a master's degree first might also be really beneficial if you just aren't exactly sure which field of psychology you want to go into. Do you want to do a PhD in clinical psychology or social psychology? or school psychology. Do you even want to do a PhD program at all? Maybe you want to do a PsyD. So there are a lot of different considerations before getting a PhD program that doing a master's program first might be able to help you figure out. So the final reason you might want to consider getting a master's degree first, and I say this with the utmost caution <laughs> because this is a gamble. If there is a school whose PhD program is like your dream program and that school has a master's program that you can attend before applying to their PhD program, then attending their master's program might, might and like with like giant, bold, highlighted, italicized, underlined letters might help you get into that school's PhD program. Being a part of that school's master's program before applying to their PhD program will give you the opportunity to start working in a faculty member's lab, start getting some experience under your belt, get to know faculty members that you might want to work with for the PhD program, and overall help you get your foot in the door. But <laughs> This is not a guarantee. Most PhD programs only accept anywhere from 5 to 15 students. Master's programs are much, much larger than that. And so being a part of the master's program cannot guarantee you a spot in their PhD program. However, <laughs> I feel like there are a lot of caveats um, to everything I'm saying right now. However, there are some programs that have entirely internal PhD application processes. That means that in order to apply to a school's PhD program, you are required to complete their master's program. But again, this does not guarantee you a spot in the school's PhD program. So now on to the cons. There are really only two major cons to doing a master's program. Um, the first one being time. Master's programs are usually two years long and a typical clinical psych PhD program can be anywhere from four to seven years long. And within that four to seven years, you will essentially complete two years worth of master's coursework. There is no guarantee that your credits from your master's degree will be able to transfer into your PhD program, which means that you're essentially adding two extra years of coursework that you will more or less repeat once you are in a PhD program. And you're adding on two extra years onto that four to seven years that you might take to finish your PhD program. The second major con is money. Unfortunately, master's programs are typically not funded. There are things like scholarships and grants and financial aid that you can apply for, but ultimately your degree will be funded by you. So that means if you, like me, have to apply for student loans every year to be able to afford school, then this is something you should really evaluate before deciding to do a master's degree. Because what you really have to decide is whether or not doing the master's degree is worth the extra 25 to 60 grand that you might have to end up having in student debt. When I was researching for this video, I found a video by Teresa from Chasing Clinical Psychology that she posted a few months ago. And I recommend watching her video um, and I'll link it down below because she really goes like really in depth with the money. She really crunches the numbers. She takes you through the typical cost of a master's program, how much you might have to pull out in student loans, the interest rate on those loans, and then what you might end up having to pay back when all is said and done. And so I will link her video down below so you can go watch it um, and learn how to crunch the numbers for yourself because I'm not going to do that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, obviously money is a really, really big consideration, especially right now with the state of the world and the economy and all that. So truly recommend crunching the numbers for yourself and finding out and deciding 
whether or not a master's degree is something that you can afford to do. Okay, so now that we've gone through a few pros and cons of getting a master's degree before applying to PhD programs, I thought it would be worth mentioning a couple of alternatives that might be better suited for you depending on your situation or your circumstance. The first alternative to getting a master's degree would be to do a post back program. So post back programs are pretty similar to master's programs in that they're intended for people students who have an undergraduate degree it could be from any field but as long as you have an undergraduate degree who are looking for you know more preparation or research experience in psychology before applying to graduate level programs so a few of the major things you have to consider when deciding whether to do a post back program as opposed to a master's program in psychology um, are things like cost, uh, what kind of experience do you get, how long will it take to finish the program, um, and a bunch of other things that I'm going to walk you through in a second. According to an APA article from March 2020, there are currently 15 psychology post back programs offered at either public or private universities in the States. However, these programs do differ from each other quite a bit on a few points. So some programs require as few as four courses to earn a certificate, while other programs might require as many as 18 to 24 courses to complete the program. In addition to that, six programs currently provide extensive research training by offering a combination of research-oriented courses and hands-on research assistantships, while other programs provide research training only in the form of courses. And there are a couple of programs that don't provide research training at all. Three programs are fully online while the remaining 12 are in-person programs. That might be different now because of corona, um, so do your research on that one. Finally, tuition varies from no cost at some universities to over $40,000 at others. In addition, some programs may offer diversity fellowships that pay for a portion of the program fee for eligible students. So as you can see, post back programs and master's programs are very similar, but also very different. And there are pros and cons to each that you would also have to consider to determine whether or not one is better for you than the other. The other alternative I have to getting a master's degree is working either part-time or full-time in a research lab. This would be most beneficial to people who are already have a bachelor's degree in psychology but like I mentioned before may not have gotten the research or clinical experience that they would have liked or needed to be competitive for PhD programs. Most research positions can be found at universities, community colleges, nonprofit organizations. You just kind of have to be diligent in your job search and check job listings pretty often and you should be able to find one. If you're still currently a student you can also network within your department, outside of your department, with faculty members that are already at your institution to see if they're able to help you find a position somewhere. One major pro to working in a research position prior to applying to PhD programs is that it gives you the chance to earn money. While you might not be able to completely pay for your degree with you know the income from that position you might be able to just save a little bit before you start your program that way you might have a year or two worth of financial security so that you don't have to stress about finances or bills or anything else like that. And that's all I have for this video. Thank you for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I really hope this was helpful for you. Like I said, I tried to make my list as detailed as possible. I did as much research as I could, but there's always more information out there. So I still highly recommend you doing your own research, uh, watching Teresa's video that I link down below really crunching the numbers for yourself because you know your situation best, you know what's best for you, and ultimately you will be able to make the considerations and decisions that you need to make. Like always, like, comment, and subscribe, and feel free to leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, and I will see you in my next one.